Hey guys, Jason with JW Class VW. Once again, here with uh, my 56 Oval Window Ragtop Goose. We're going to be doing some tech tips today on installing the distributor drive shaft in the uh, engine. We are here uh, today working on the engine and doing some distributor drive gear stuff. I told you we'd be bringing you a tech tips on that. So I'm going to show you how to install that distributor drive shaft with the case cracked, not closed today, but uh, with the case open. Also, I'm going to probably work on getting this, uh, this uh, single port engine back together again so that I can have a running engine before I get the uh, big block build. But we're also going to have some updates on that big block build, the 2165, and where I am and some of the parts that are on their way. All right, guys, stay tuned. All right, guys, tech tips today. We're going to go over how to install the distributor drive shaft. Some people have been asking about, uh, you know, are there any tricks to it? Uh, can you help me out with the install? And uh, we're going to go over some of the, the, the few things that I do whenever I'm installing my distributor drive gear to, to help out with that. I don't know how many times I've gotten this in here, and I've learned the lesson the hard way uh, about the 180 out and having your uh, distributor drive in the right way. So as you can see, I've already got the case opened up and uh, I've cleaned most of it out too. If you were uh, watched one of my other videos, I went over you know, a little scrubbing inside the, uh, the kitchen sink. I want to have the uh, small engine in the car while we're uh, working on the big block build because I'm tired of goose sitting in here, man. I want to be able to take her out for a ride and uh, I'm missing my, uh, my weekly rides. I, I usually drive her at least a couple times a week. The weather's kind of crappy today in Houston. It's a little humid and, and muggy. The rodeo started today, so there's a lot of people going to the rodeo. But um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do some work on the engine. Okay. Now, one of the main tricks that I want you guys to know about, or one of the main things to do whenever you're doing your distributor drive install, is you'll notice I have my distributor in place, right? You got the distributor in place. So that it helps hold the gear down because you're going to have when you do the install and you're dropping your crank on here with the bearings the um the, the drive gear will will float up if you don't have your distributor in here as well also you want to make sure that you have your little spring in there that's for the uh, the anti-chatter spring that keeps everything in place that uh allows the um the distributor drive gear to stay down as well that, that's one of the, some of the the key tricks to the uh to the uh, install or, or one of the key things you need to know about the, your distributor drive when you're putting it in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys get a better view of what I'm looking at down here. Okay. So I got you a nice close-up view of the uh, the actual distributor gear itself. Shed a little more light on this. See if that helps out some. Uh, yeah, it does. So when you're looking at your gear at least this gear on 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 uh, this single port engine. I'm not sure if all gears have this, but there is a a flat groove or a flat slot to the actual gear. Maybe you can see a little bit better when it turns like that. You can see the flat side over here. The, well, the one of the tricks to this, and one of the things I'm sure that Volkswagen designed is that that flat portion needs to be facing towards you as you're installing. So the flat portion should be like like a uh, flat right across this side or in line with the, the case app itself. What that does is on the top side, your slot, there's a slot in the top of your, uh, your gear where your shipper rides in. Let's take a look at that slot for a second. Do, 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 do. Let's turn this. So when you're looking at your engine from the top, you're gonna see a little farther down. Sorry. You also can see the spring down there. But you can see that that slot is lined up straight across the front of your engine. And it actually kind of lines up, uh, kind of lines up with this little crack in my uh, the lock for my distributor drive. Or a lot for the distributor itself. 
And see, that's at top dead center on number one, that's where you want that slot to be. You want that slot to be straight across. It's a good, good thing to know so that when you have your case opened up and you're actually looking at your, uh, looking at your drive gear, that this flat portion gives you a good reference point that as long as this is flat across the front, you know your slot is straight across the case. So that makes a really good reference point to use. So what I recommend is that once you got your drive gear down in and it's straight across, that you take your distributor Your distributor and you put it install it right down where it's supposed to be so it's straight across in the flat here and then your actual uh, your actual uh, rotor will be pointing towards the uh, the timing crack in your case and this is uh, on the case of your distributor and this is the uh, next part that I'm gonna tell you about you want to go ahead and push it down and lock down your distributor so that your timing mark is lined up perfectly with the uh, with this mark right here. That'll also give you an additional reference point to look at once you drop your uh, your crank in. So let's go ahead and uh, lock it down and show you guys that. Okay. So as you're looking at the top of your distributor, you'll notice that my hash mark is way off. So you gotta turn around and this hash mark right here inside the, the body of the distributor is your timing mark where you want to have your rotor centered right on that timing mark. So, well, as long as your rotor is pointing towards the, the, the front stud here of your, uh, of your fuel pump, all those timing marks should be lined up. We'll lock that down real quick. Now you know as long as you have your rotor at that timing mark, once you have your crank in place, that uh, your timing is good. This is where you need to have your distributor, rotor, and the uh, housing all lined up with the slot before you go to set your crank into position. And when you set your crank into position, you want to have the number one rod pointing up as if as in uh, top of center position. What I use is I use a rag here to help me set the crank down in place. This rag right here acts as a handle so that you've got your your number uh, one and number two rods. Actually, wait a second, that's not right. Yeah, it is. Your number one and number two rods are going to be pointing up. So when you go to drop this in, you need to make sure that your orientation on your crank is right. This is how you'll drop it in with your number two and your number one rod pointing up. The uh, Also, you want to look for a reference point is on the front of your crank where your woodruff key is going to go. This should be pointing down, down towards the ground as you're dropping in the crank. So that's something you want to pay attention to as well. This is going to be a little more difficult once you actually have the, uh, the dowel pins in place and you're, uh, you're setting your bearings as well, but I've got the dowel pins out right now just for uh, just for demonstration purposes to show you how the handle helps out, or the little handle that I put on here for the rods helps out with the laying the crank in. All right, so I'm about to drop the crank down on here, and as you can see inside of my, uh, my main bearing area, I've got the dowel pins out to help out with just setting it in for demonstration. But like I was telling you, the way that it sits, you need to have the whole distributor drive gear and spring, the whole assembly in position along with its little washers down here so that it doesn't float forward when you're landing, when you're landing your crank inside of here. So no doll pins. And this is just to help you out with test fit to kind of get you an idea how it's going to feel. All right. So I've got my handle and I've got my rods. One, one and two all the way up. Well, one's all the way up, two is in a down position. But you can see, like, landing just like this. It's, uh, without the dowel pins, it's, it's really easy. It's not, not that difficult at all. 
Now, once again, you want to check your reference point on the front that your Woodruff key is pointing down, which it is. And we are in position. So like right now, if I go to turn these rods, let me pull the handle out real quick. I go to turn these rods. Yeah, it fell in position. It's seated. You should start to see the uh, the rotor turn. Move this forward a little bit. There you go. Now you'll be able to see the rotor, rotor turn as I'm rotating the uh, the assembly. See, it's moving. So now you know that you've got your your uh, crank distributor drive gear all the way down in position, and your rod is at the top position here, number one position. Now this is where people make the mistake. This is where, or even I do it sometimes too, where you might be in the wrong position on your crank when it comes to the position of the camshaft. So you're gonna have to go ahead and put your camshaft in too to actually see where it needs to be because you might be on, on that 180 out position to where your uh, your uh, number one cylinder is actually not firing. It's not on, it's not on the compression stroke. So this is where we'll go ahead and drop the cam in position and go ahead and see where we are. You can see that we're at number one position here because your rotor is pointing towards the stud for the fuel pump. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move these rods forward. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the timing marks on the uh, the crank to see where the, the uh, cam needs to go. So you can see the timing marks right here on the crank. We're gonna have to rotate it around enough to be able to get the cam to land on those timing marks with the actual cam timing mark. So we just gotta rotate a little bit, not much. See right about there, right about there is where we want the uh, timing mark to be. And the camshaft itself, the camshaft timing mark. You just land it into its correct position, and then you just rotate the cam down into the bearings. And then you can rotate the crank over once you've got the cam in to make sure that your marks are right. And you can see who these ones are. We're good to go. So this is where we want to bring it back to top dead center. So we'll bring the crank back around to its very top position, number one. And we've got the, all right, cam is all good. Number one, fully extended. And what you're looking for, which we got it this time, we got the, we got the, the cam in the right position, is that you'll look at your camshaft. And you'll see, as long as this lobe is pointing down and this one's pointing down, you go straight, straight across the, uh, the lobes for, for number one and number three, cylinders that these should be pointing down and that's telling you that right now with your number one rod in its uppermost position and your timing mark for your distributor lined up with the uh, the uh, front stud for your fuel pump that you're uh, in compression stroke or into the compression stroke for number one cylinder and that's how you do it if you put uh, if you go to drop your crank down into position and these two lobes are pointing up like this lobe is up and this lobe is up across, then then you're not you're in the uh, the exhaust the exhaust stroke, and that's not the stroke you want to be. This is really what I have. Uh, this is really all I have for you guys today for tech tips. It's uh, something that can easily be uh, messed up if you don't know. There's not a lot of really clear videos out there yet on YouTube. I hope this one is helpful to you guys when it comes to setting up your engine for. Um, for uh, correct timing on number one cylinder. The, uh, once again, those, those key things to look for is to make sure that your, your rod for number one, which is your rod for number one and number two, you wanna make sure that that rod for number, number one is fully extended and that you have your Woodruff key, this area right here, pointing down, and that your cam, when you're looking at your camshaft, that the lobes on the back side, your lobes for the uh, number one and number, uh, number one and number three valves are pointing down, which that tells you that you're in your compression stroke for number one. And that's where you want to be. You want to be in your number one compression stroke and you want your rotor on your distributor to be in the firing position for number one so that everything is perfect.
Okay, guys. I hope that was helpful for tech tips. That's uh, maybe a little bit uh, longer tech tips, tech, uh, tech tips, but um, I know that it's good information for you guys to have. Now, what I'm going to be doing moving forward for right now is I'm going to work on setting the uh, case halves back together and checking the uh, the clearance on my uh, my bearings to make sure that we can clamp everything down. So that's what I'm working on today. I'm working on getting this uh, engine back together again so that I can get it into Goose. And uh, as you guys may have seen on some of my uh, my other videos, my my ones I put out, the uh, camshaft itself, the one that I that I did have in here had too much lift. So that's what was allowing my engine, or not allowing my engine to run properly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm putting back in the stock camshaft with uh, some new lifters. And that uh, should go ahead and remedy that issue so that I can run my engine on the uh, single port engine or run my car on the single port engine for now until we get the big bore, the big block done. And uh, yeah, that's it guys. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. Get out in the garage, do some work. This is Jason with a JW Classic VW and uh, talk to you guys soon. Bye.